Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go through how you would use Procreate to create sketches, annotate, photographs, and just the general uh, introduction to the program before I go further into how to do more advanced things. So this is the first thing that you get when you open the <coughs> application. It is £10, but I'd, for students especially, or just people who like to draw a lot, I, I do think it's worth it because it's quite expensive but in the long run it saves you a lot of time because they spend a lot of time you know adding in all of these features to speed up the process of drawing without it being in the way so it is worth it and it, especially if you want to do like hand renders and things it's a lot easier than using like a, a Wacom tablet or something like that so this is a cup that I created on the app uh, and then, you know, like a light or perhaps like a computer mouse. Or, you know, if I, if I designed a hairdryer or something, I could render it in here. Now, sketching, yeah, I think it's it, a lot of people prefer CAD renders, but for certain things, I actually don't because it gives a sense of, you know, imperfection. It gives a sense of personality to the drawing, which I think is quite important. So you know, if I if I'd have created this in CAD, I mean, yeah, it would look more realistic. But it this doing a drawing like this leaves something to the imagination, and I think that's quite important because obviously this would be a prototype, and it's important to leave certain things to the imagination. You know, you're not too concerned exactly about you know how how this would fold around here. You just that would be the kind of concept, and then you just carry on designing. So I do think it's really important. Um, also, in Procreate, you can do very realistic life drawings <coughs> using the pen uh, pencils within the app. So this is one that I created. It's not finished, but I do think it's quite nice how you can tilt the pencil and then get these, you know, faded pencil edges. And then if you want to be quite harsh, you can, you know, stand the pencil on its end and then get more of a harsh line. And then you can see, like, oh, make it white. Uh, you can see up here that just by lightly pressing on the brush, uh, the pencil, it's not allowing, well, it's not cr pressing down as hard, so you can get some of the background showing through, which is a bit more realistic than just, you know, this like solid black. But it can be quite good, but it does take a bit of practice. It's a bit weird at first when you do it. So there's some of the things you can do with it. Now I'm going to walk through the menu. So you can create stacks. So I've created a sketches stack of things I've just you know done in my spare time, uh, you know mess, messing about with some of these here just with brushes, and then some like there's a tattoo or you know a card cover or something. So I've put them in a stack. Um, for one of my projects, I was annotating some models that I've uh, photographed. So I had this model that I three D printed and put together, and rather than adding this in to a document and then putting text over it I actually obviously put it into this app and then drew over the photograph to show exactly how this thing would be put together so you can see like the tongue in the middle or maybe I could add a soul of some kind you know things like that so that's a new way of annotating the models instead of writing a really boring paragraph so that's what you can do but I've put all of these in a stack um, so to create a stack you need more than one uh, sketch so for now we'll just create a new one so you just go over to the right and then create a sketch you can choose whatever screen uh, size you want so if you want uh, a 4 by 6 photograph or an A4 is probably a good idea if you're putting it into a portfolio but for the most time I just click screen size because that just suits me and this is what you get so if we go over to the left and click on the spanner um, and <clears throat> I'll just go through the preferences so you can choose a light or dark interface you know if, if you work at night that might be better now I'm left-handed so I prefer my interface on the right so you know can I draw black I prefer that interface on the right because I'm left-handed so this is your brush size and then this is the opacity and that's the back and forward I prefer that there um, 
cursor, I'll ignore that canvas. Oh, that's strange. Don't know what that is. Must be a new thing. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so in here you can edit the pressure curve. So you can adjust. I think it was like this when I first got it, but you can adjust how hard you have to press before the brush size or intensity changes. Now I think I've set mine about here, but this will just come depending on what you prefer. But you can edit that, um, and that's that. So. In the actions, you can add a photograph. So if we wanted to add a photograph of, I don't know, let's say we made this and we want to uh, design over it or you know make some changes, we can then insert it, make it bigger if we want, so it fills the page, that'll do. Obviously you can flip it if you want. And then over here in the top right, you can create a new layer and if you click on the N on the other layer and just turn it down, the opacity down. You can then draw over it, you know, if you wanted to, like that. So that's the insert and photograph. Um, you can add text as well, <coughs> canvas. You can add drawing guides. So now, if, if you're an interiors uh, designer, or well, some designers just prefer to use them. You can add a drawing guide. So you can add a perspective drawing guide if you want. Actually, I'll just turn them off. So you can see. So you can add a perspective to either side. And the one at the top, the three-point perspective. So obviously this will help you to get your building uh, horizontal and vertical lines correct. And it will help communicate your idea a lot better if you use these perspective lines. Obviously with practice you might not need them but it's there and sometimes it does help and if you know you can adjust them you can bring them closer together or further out if you want a different perspective or you can have an isometric if you don't want to draw in perspective or you just want a grid if you're using things for like graphics you know alignment grids and things like that. So that's the grids come out of that turn it off then share. You can share it as a, a PDF if you want to send it to someone. You can share it as a JPEG or a PNG if you want it as a transparent background, just for PNG only. Um, and then you can share it as a PSD Photoshop file as well. Now that is, oh, that's really important because if you're doing a lot of work, and you really want to touch up the photographs afterwards or you know um, put them in situ in another background or edit them after the fact you can do that if you export it as a PSD file so that keeps all of the layers separate which is crucial which means you can move them around and then a video this app does record what you do as a video and you can replay that and you can export that so if you wanted to show someone like for example, if I wanted to upload a tutorial on how I created that cup, I can uh, just export the video because it, it does record it in the background. So I'll just play the video. So you can see if you were stuck on something, I could just send a video to someone and show them how I would do it or how I actually went about the process. So that's that. And obviously the preferences we went through. Go back to the gallery. Right, so on the right hand side, you've got your brushes. Now there is a lot of brushes. And to be honest, most of the time I don't use them. The only ones that I use are the technical pen or a fine tip or maybe a syrup pen. Now this depends on personal preference, but I just prefer to use these because it's for me it's it that's the closest thing to an actual technical pen, you know, by Copic that I have. Um, if you preferred pencils, that's fine. You can use pencils. You know, you can duplicate them, but you know, HP pencils should be fine. And then you got different types of calligraphy pens, paintings. I don't really use these. But sometimes if I was to use like a dry brush, 
it's like a brown color oh I've got the drawing grid on <coughs> so sometimes if I was to use make it a bit bigger I can create strokes like that and then if I was to add that to a chair it would help create the wood effect so you can use some of these brushes you know to create different textures within the app but it depends on what you're doing you know the different types of um, watercolors and then you know grids and things if you wanted some uh, spots on the design for some reason or some more abstract ones you know for backgrounds these uh, spray paints are quite nice because sometimes I actually use them they're a bit big just to show you but sometimes I actually use them and shrink the size down to create like a concrete effect on top of a, a sketch so that can be quite useful or stubble if you wanted stubble more vintage ones but you can download extra ones and you can import them but if you wanted to edit the brush so let's say we the technical pen if you wanted to edit that all we have to do is just tap on it again and then we can edit all of the settings for this brush so you can see if I draw a line like that and then I clear it if I adjust the streamline to 100% you'll see that the brush actually is a little bit laggy it's not laggy it just it makes the line smooth after the after you've drawn it so if I do this and then take down the streamline and maybe draw another one you can see that I can't zoom in but the, the lines a lot more jagged and bumpy but if I turn that up it's a lot more smooth which can help but the faster you draw the more laggy it is but it can help to get nice smooth lines so you can see that line this one here that I just drew try it again that doesn't look too bad it's not perfectly smooth but then if I turn the streamline down you can see how jagged it is and the jitter is just the spread of the brush itself I normally keep that at zero for the technical pen <clears throat> but you've got other settings like taper uh, sorry uh, I'll go with fall off first so fall off is if you were to draw it would simulate lifting the pen off as you finish the line so I'm drawing quite fast and then if I, if I turn that right up it's quite difficult to get a full line but that can help a lot if you're doing a lot of you know like hair things that might help because if I turn that down there's loads of settings I'm not going to go through them all but basically you can adjust anything you can think of with regards to this brush and it, obviously if you don't like it you can reset it so that's adjusting settings for the brushes this tool is the smudge tool um, I've never used that to be honest I, I'm not I won't go into it but basically any line you can just smudge it and then the rubber if you tap on that again you can change the actual rubber type so if you wanted like a hard edge rubber you can do it you can use that like the hard brush or you can use the softer rubber you can have um, textured rubbers if you want to rub out the texture of you know in as if you're rubbing out with a, a dry brush I know it's not possible in real life but you can do it in here which is one of the benefits of using like a digital app and then here you've got your layers so every time you want to create a new part of the object like the highlights or the shadows you should use a new layer because then that allows you to just turn it off so if I just draw and then I draw on this one if them layers were merged together I couldn't then use the arrow tool on the left to move that around so if I wasn't happy with where it was you know I could move it and then within this menu you can actually use the warp function to adjust exactly where this is 
you know, because that can help. And then if you tap with the pencil on the layer itself, again, you can then rename it or you can copy it, you can mask it. I'm going to go into masks and clipping masks in another video because that's quite important and it takes a while. But basically, it's good practice to start using layers, especially when you've got lots of shading and lots of line work because it, it can help to speed things up in the long run. And then on the right, you've got colours. So you can add a colour if you want. So if I like it, if I like this orange, um, oh, I can drag down from here and fill the page with it. If I've got a circle and I want to fill it, I can fill that in. Colours. Obviously you can add the colours to your palette if you wanted to. Or you can use different types of palettes. This is more similar to what's in Photoshop if you prefer that. You know, and different types. Or you can create your own palettes. You know, if you use certain colours a lot, you might want to create your own palette. Or like a natural palette or a like a rustic palette or something. Yeah, so to create basic shapes, I'll get rid of them layers. To create like a, a circle, normally you'd do that if you were sketching, but in Procreate what you can do is if you sketch and then hold the pen, you can create an ellipse and then if you tap with your finger, you can create a perfect circle, which is really useful. You can do that with squares as well. Um, I think you can do triangles. Yeah, you can. Obviously that makes it an equilateral, but you can adjust that. And then if you quick, when you let go of the pencil, you can click edit shape at the top and then edit the corner points like that if you wanted that. But one thing to note is once you tap with your finger, you cannot then go back and edit that shape. So you know, it edits the whole layer. But if I wanted to fill that in, I just tap with the pencil and drag like that, and then that'll fill it in. Um, if I wanted to add a yellow, I could do that. But then you can't go back after you've done that, which is why I use layers. So I think that covers everything for the basics. Um, I'll do more videos on you know brushes and layer masks and stuff like that. But that was just a quick introduction. If you've got any questions, just leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you as best I can.